Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Thursday, December 18th, 2014, around 8, 17 p.m. in Berwick, Massachusetts. It's about 34 degrees. The low temperature tonight will be about 29. Tomorrow's temperatures will be about 40. Some news to report. It's over. It's officially over. The Rondo era in Boston. The Boston Celtics have traded a captain away to the Dallas Mavericks for four players and some draft picks and Rondo you had a great career with the Celtics but I hate to see you go but I don't think he wants to be part of a rebuilding process which is going to take several years Celtics now are in tank mode and that's about it and I think the Celtics might not make the playoffs for several more years anyway that's about it on that and my third and final video blog subject of the night is about the greatest NBA player of all time. I'm talking about Michael Jordan, who played shooting guard and small forward. And he he was one of the, the greatest NBA player of all time. He played for the Bulls and the Wizards during his career. And Michael Jordan has so many records and stuff. And he had so many endorsements, especially Nike. He became a billionaire by endorsing Nike. Okay, here's the story. Michael Jordan was born in Brooklyn, New York, and he grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. Michael, in high school, played football, baseball, and basketball, and he tried out for the, his high school basketball team sophomore year, but he did not make the cut, so he had to play junior varsity, and during the summer between his June, um, sophomore and junior year of high school, he grew, grew, grew about six, seven inches. And when he tried out again, he made a team. And he was an amazing player for his team, averaging over 20 points junior and senior year. Senior year, Michael was a McDonald's All-American team. And he was highly recruited by several colleges. Um, Duke tried to recruit him, South Carolina, South, um, Syracuse, and Virginia, all were after Michael Jordan. But he picked the University of North Carolina, Tar Heels, playing with Dean Smith. And Jordan played three seasons with North Carolina. He, in his freshman year, he won an NCAA championship. Junior, senior year, he was a consensus All-American. And his junior year, he was ACC Player of the Year, and he also was National Collegiate Player of the Year, and he decided to enter the NBA draft in 1984, and this was a deep draft for the NBA, probably the deepest draft up to that date for the NBA. A lot of experts were saying uh, that Jordan was going to be a number one pick, but the Houston, Ast uh, Houston Rockets owned the number one pick, and they needed a center, so they drafted uh, Hakeem Olajuwon became a Hall of Famer. Second pick was owned by the Portland Trailblazers, and they needed a center as well. So they selected Sam Bowie out of Kentucky. Sam Bowie had an injury-prone career. The general manager of the Portland Trailblazers, man, at least late, later, says that was a big mistake set selecting Sam Bowie. They should have selected Michael Jordan, but at the time they had a similar player. For Mike, like Michael Jordan on the team, Clyde Drexler, Drexler, who would be a Hall of Famer. Could you imagine if it was Drexler and Jordan on the same team with the Blazers? The Blazers could be winning all those championships. Think about it. And then the Chicago Bulls drafted, had the third pick in the NBA draft. And they took the right thing, selected Michael Jordan. And this was a good thing because Michael Jordan became one of the best iconic Chicago sports stars with the Bulls. The Bulls were a struggling team and he made them relevant over due time. When he first entered the NBA in 1984, Michael Jordan was amazing with his dunks and his good play, easily winning the 1985 Rookie of the Year in the NBA and also making all rookie team. The the Bulls made the playoffs that year, but they got bounced in the first round. His second year, he breaks his foot, missing most of the year, but he went back to finish to get his college degree at the University of North Carolina and be in geography, which was good because many um, players who get drafted in the NBA, star players, don't go back 
to college to finish the degree because they get all the money when they sign these contracts and endorsements say they don't need it. But Michael Jordan wanted to get his college degree. And he and he did. And also he at the end of that season, the Bulls made the playoff but got bounced in the first round again. They had um he scored Jordan scored 63 points in a playoff game against the South Dick, double overtime loss. And then the and the Bulls steadily improved over time. But many experts were saying that it was the Bulls were basically Michael Jordan and nobody else. And but over time they added players like Scottie Pippen and Bill Cartwright and Horace Grant and John Paskin and a few others to help Jordan out. Jordan won many NBA scoring titles, about 10 of them. He also were, uh, made all-star postseason teams, first all-NBA all team 10 times, 9 times, all-defensive team, first team 14 times. He was an NBA all-star and stuff. 1988, Michael Jordan won the M NBA MVP for the first of five times, and the Bulls made it to the second round of the playoffs that year, but they got bounced by the Detroit Pistons. The Pistons were a thorn in the Bulls' side because the Bulls looked like they were going to be breaking through, but every year they had to face the Pistons in the playoffs. This was the bad boys era. Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambert, Dennis Rodman, and others, and the the Pistons were a great, the best team then. The Bulls can't, couldn't knock them off into 1991. That's when they finally did. The Bulls knocked out the Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals and beat the, and beat them and then beat the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals. And first of six NBA MV, most vet, NBA Finals MVPs by Michael Jordan. And Jordan would, would repeat this feat, the Bulls in 1992 against the Trailblazers and 1993 against the Suns, which the Suns were probably the most could have threatened them as the biggest challenge the Bulls had to knock them off for the six NBA championships they won in eight years. And Jordan was continuing to ride high, but he had to retire. He retired in October of 1993 because the sudden death of his father in August of that year. But there was a rumor going around that this this sudden retirement by Michael Jordan was a cover up because Michael Jordan was gam was a heavy gambler and he and around this time he had a lot of heavy gambling debts and there was a rumor going around that the uh, retirement was a cover up because the NBA actually suspended Jordan for gambling. Don't know if this is true or not, but they'd maybe told him, we'll let you retire just to get this, the gambling things up because they didn't want a black guy for the NBA, that, like the, the star players suspended for gambling. So Michael Jordan was retired from the NBA for 18 months. Around that time, Michael Jordan decided to have a dream to play professional baseball, Major League Baseball. He signed a minor league contract with the Chicago White Sox at the age of 31. In the 1994 season, he played for the Birmingham Barons, the White Sox double-A affiliate, which was man the manager of the Birmingham Barons at that time was Terry Francona, who, who became a Major League manager eventually with the Phillies, Red Sox, and Indians, and Michael Jordan was an outfielder, but he wasn't a great baseball player. He only batted 202, two points above the Mendoza line, two, three home runs and 51 and a half yards, and the strike of 1994 kind of killed his dream of playing in the, in the big leagues, Michael Jordan, because Jordan really, if he made the big leagues, he wanted to be part of the union, and he supported the union. In 1995, Michael Jordan leaves professional baseball to go back to the NBA and he go came back with a vengeance and he picked up where he left off the Bulls in 1996 they won the NBA championship again and they won a record 72 games 72 and 10 in the regular season and beat the Seattle Supersonics for championship number four and then in 1997 they beat the Utah Jazz for championship number five and in 1998, they beat the Utah Jazz again for championship 
Number six, Michael Jordan makes a classic shot in game six of the 1998 NBA Finals, which was a great, great thing. The greatest shot, one of the greatest shots. That shot should have been his last shot, shot, last game in the NBA. He retires again in 1990 after the 1998 NBA Finals. Six straight, six straight, six out of eight NBA championships in like four six championships in eight years, I really believe Michael Jordan did not retire did not retire in nineteen ninety three, then the Bulls would have put, most likely would have had eight straight NBA championships. It, it, it was no doubt about it because the Bulls were that good. And then Michael Jordan leaves the NBA, retires again, gets so many endorsements for other things like Coca Cola Gatorade, McDonald's, and so many others. And around this time, he buys a piece of the Washington Wizards. He also is the president and general manager of basketball operations. Plus, he owns a minority interest of the Washington Capitals. But he, Michael Jordan, kind of had an urge to get back to play the basketball again at the age of 38. And he signs with the Washington Wizards. And he, just, he sells his interest and resigns his President and general manager, and he wants, and he's playing again at age 38 with the Washington Wizards, Wizards, and he played two seasons, 2001 to 2003. Michael Jordan still had the skills, but he, the ball, the the Wizards were not an NBA. It, they weren't a playoff team. They were a fringe playoff team. Both seasons, the Wizards did not make the playoffs. They weren't even a great team. And Jordan's skills were kind of a little bit declining. It was still good. He still made all-star teams, but it was not the Michael Jordan. At, it wasn't Michael Jordan, really. His skills were not that great playing those two years with the Wizards. So it was a disappointment for him to play for the Wizards, in my opinion, he he should have he should have never came back for the third time because, you know, some he want maybe he wanted to prove a point maybe he could have led the Wizards to an NBA championship but it was not gonna happen with the Wizards they they won a great team with Jordan around and Michael Jordan finally retired for good in two thousand three and he was a first ballot Hall of Famer in two thousand nine the the. Bulls retired as number 23. I think the Wizards did 23 as well. And even the Miami Heat retired as number 23, even though he did not play one game for them. And North Carolina retired as number 23 as well. Michael Jordan finally became an owner of an NBA team in 2009 when he became a majority owner of the Charlotte Bobcats. And in a, in, in a few years later, he he renamed the Bobcats their rightful name, the Charlotte Hornets, because the Hornets' name moved, the original Charlotte Hornets moved to New Orleans. They were they were still the Hornets in 2012 when there was a new owner, who the Tom Benson, who re, renamed them the New Orleans Pelicans, and then the Hornets' name was back up for grabs. So Michael Jordan bought the name right and renamed it. The Bobcats, the Hornets, which rightfully belongs to Charlotte Hornets. Michael Jordan was amazing. The best NBA player of all time. Third on the all-time score. He's fourth now on the all-time scoring list now. And Michael Jordan is going to go down as the best NBA basketball player of all time. He's even better than Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and others. People say LeBron James is gonna is gonna be when he retires gonna surpass um, LeBron James, which I doubt. I doubt there's not gonna be another Michael Jordan. You could take that to a bank, and that's about it on that. And I'll be back later, Facebook friends and YouTube followers, with three more video blogs tomorrow. First will be the top ten greatest Cleveland Indians pitchers of all time. Second will be my revised predictions for 2015 for the NBA and this is going to surprise you and the third and final video blog of the night will be about the late great professional wrestler former intercontinental champion and former US champion ravishing Rick Rude would I would like to have now 
as you fight all you fat, ugly, out of shape, Seattle sweat hogs. Keep my will, keep the noise down when I take my robe off and show what a sexy man is supposed to look like. Hit the music. That's what with Groot's famous line was. And don't forget Facebook friends and YouTube followers coming soon to these video blogs will be the top 10 greatest battle royals in professional wrestling history. My 2015 revised predictions about the NHL and other stuff. Next week, the top 10 list will include the top 10 greatest Detroit Tigers pitchers and players of all time in the top 10 Cincinnati, play Cincinnati Reds pitchers and players of all time and other stuff and sooner or later Julie Broughton and Heidi Pratt will be getting these blogs on here they'll uh, they'll get personality profiles don't know when but two beautiful blondes with nice legs and great smiles will be coming see you later Facebook friends and YouTube falls by now